Okay, so here we're working with a turbine. The schematic's given to us right over here. We have uh, steam as the working agent, so we're given the inlet right over here, and we have two exits. We have one and two. Our job here is to find the velocity of the steam at exit two and exit three. So just by looking at this, you can kind of tell that you're going to use the one-dimensional mass rate balance. So you have the volumetric flow rate coming in at exit one or inlet one, and then you have a mass flow rate relation at exit two, and then you're just given the diameter of the exit at exit two and three. So we're gonna find velocity two and velocity three. Both of them are gonna be in meters per second. The main expression we're gonna use is mass flow rate, m dot equals a v, or the volumetric flow rate, which is area times velocity, I'll write that out in a minute, divided by specific volume. So just remember the relation that a v, or area times velocity, is equal to flow rate, which I usually depict by a v that looks like that, with a dot above it, or you can write it out as a q as well. But in thermodynamics, we typically don't do that because you use heat transfer in fluid mechanics, you'll typically see a q. But with that aside, Let's go ahead and dig deeper into this. So we'll start at the inlet. So at the inlet, you're given the volumetric flow rate, so you have this variable up here, and you're given the pressure and you're given the temperature, so you can find the specific volume. So let's go ahead and do that. So we'll turn to 80 bar on the properties table. And at 80 bar, we see that the saturation temperature is 170.4 degrees Celsius. And we're far above that, so we know we're in the superheated region once again, we're given 440 degrees Celsius. So let's go to the superheated table for water. And again, we go to 80 bar, 440 degrees Celsius, and you find your specific volume right over here. 0 0.03742 meters cubed per kilogram. So I'm just going to rearrange this for what we're looking for, which is actually m dot, so I'm just going to leave it as is. So we have m dot equals and... We're given, uh, let me just fill in that specific volume actually. So it was 0 0.03742, 0 0.03742, and that's meters cubed per kilogram. So the flow rate was given in meters cubed per minute. You want to make sure that you're in SI, which is second. It's the unit for time. So we're just going to convert that real quick. So 236 uh, meters cubed, and that's me per minute. And then you just divide by 60, more or less. You have one minute. Crosses out. 60 seconds. And you're going to be left with um, a V. Oops. A V1 is equal to 3.93. And that's going to be meters cubed per second. So we can write that right over here, 3.93, that's meters cubed per second, divided by meters cubed per kilogram, so it works out. And if, if you plug this into a calculator, you'll have that m dot, and this is m dot 1 to be specific, is equal to 105.1 kilograms per second. Now to solve our velocity 2, we rearrange the formula above, and we have velocity 2 is equal to mass flow rate 2 times specific volume 2 divided by the area at 2. Now the mass flow rate at exit 2 is just equal to 0 0.2 times the mass flow rate at exit 1 as stated in the schematic, which would be times 105.1, and this leads you to m.2 being equal to 21.02 and that's kilograms per second so we can start filling this in over here so that's going to be equal to 21.02 kilograms per second and now to find the specific volume at two we have 60 bar and 400 celsius so we go to the properties table and at 60 bar, you see that the saturation temperature is 275. We're way above that. So once again, for my knowledge, we're at 400 Celsius, 60 bar, so superheated. 
we go to 60 bar on the top right, 400 Celsius, and here is our value. That's our specific volume, 0 0.04739. And that's uh, meters cubed per kilogram. Now we divide by the area. Remember that the area of a cylinder of a cylinder is, or the cross section of a cylinder is, uh, pi r squared, which is just a circle. Or since you're given that diameter, it's going to be equal to. Um, let me just write out the formula here: is equal to pi r squared, or also equal to pi d squared over four. So that's the equation we're going to be using. So it's going to be equal to pi d, that's an ugly 5, squared over 4. And when you calculate all of this out, you'll find that the velocity at the second exit, or the first exit actually, is equal to 20.3 meters per second. Now we just rinse and repeat for the third uh, exit, or the second exit, but state 3 here. So we have velocity 3, is equal to the mass flow rate three times specific volume three divided by area three. Now the mass flow rate is just gonna be equal to, so remember that m dot one has to be equal to m dot two plus m dot three, or you could say m dot three is equal to 0 0.8 times m dot one. Either way works. But if you substitute your values in here, you'll have 105.1 is equal to, we had 20, 21.02 plus m, whoops, m dot 3. And you'll have that m dot 3 is equal to 84.0. So you have 84.08 kilograms per second. So we can just set that in here in our formula, 84.08. And then to find that specific volume, now you're given a quality, so you know you're a saturated liquid or a saturated vapor or somewhere in between, and we're in between here being 0.9, closer to a saturated vapor, 0.7 bar. So we'll go over here to our table, and we have 0.7 bar, and we're going to be somewhere in between these two numbers here. So we're going to use the following formula. I suppose I'll do it right over here to save some space. So we know that the volume we're looking for, the specific volume at 3, is equal to the saturated liquid plus the quality times the difference between the saturated uh, vapor minus the saturated liquid. So in other words, we have V3 is equal to, and we're going to look at... 0.7 bar, so we're looking at these numbers right over here. So it's going to equal to 0 0.001036 plus 0 0.9 times 2.365 minus 0 0.001036. Quite a lot of numbers there. And you're going to have that the specific volume is 2.1286. So 2.1286, and then these are multiplied by each other. And then very simply find the area is just pi d squared over 4. Now once you crunch all this into a calculator, you'll have that the velocity v3, it's going to be like a v, at three is equal to 101.3 meters per second.